big fight coming up this weekend at middleweight. We have Kyle Dawkins, brother of Chris, taking on Megatron, Phil Haas. Matt, we had a great, and still do, have a great interview with Kyle Dawkins on the channel, getting ready for his fight against Ali Askab Hizriev, and man, that would have been a great one. Unfortunately, that one was scrapped. They never really said why or based on who, but just overall due to COVID-19 protocols. So, Kyle Dawkins has to wait a little bit, and now he gets Phil Haas, and it's an interesting matchup because... We kind of know what we're going to get out of Kyle Dawkins. And then his last time out, he beat Dustin Stutzfoots very, very well. And it's it's weird that I say that, and that's a weird way to put it. But if you look at it, it was a complete performance from Kyle Dawkins. The striking was all right. The takedowns were good. The takedown defense was good. He really implemented a complete game. He just wasn't able to finish him. For Phil Haas, it was kind of the same thing as last time out. And when you just thought that maybe he was tired against Nasruddin Imovov... He just started pouring the pressure on even more and implementing his game plan with the takedowns. You might have thought, okay, well, Phil Haas, the book's out on him. We've seen his performances. It's kill or be killed. It's, you know, losing to Luis Taylor with World Series, eventual PFL champ. Losing to Julian Marquez on Contender Series by finish standing up. Or just beating the brakes off of guys like Jacob Malkoon in a fight that they made you pay for in a pay-per-view of UFC 254. And I'll take that one to my grave. But I like the fight he had his last time out against Imovov. Phil Haas, here's one thing I always like. And as someone, we watch a lot of MMA here at Fight Night Picks. You guys can probably assume that. But Phil Haas, I thought I knew everything I knew about him. He was just kind of that, oh, I can get the knockout really quick. Or I could be like Jimmy Manuel and get knocked out. And that's pretty much the story of my career. But in his fight against Imovov, you're right. He showed us something that we never thought Phil Haas is going to be able to do. He showed us kind of that wrestling side of Phil Haas. And that when the going gets tough, Phil Haas will just wilt to the pressure. He can find that second gear. He can get his second win. And he can... He can get tough when the going gets tough. And that's a good thing about Phil Haas because I was a little worried about his durability. I did see him as kind of one of those fighters where, yeah, he's got all the muscles and if he can knock you out, that's great. But he does have a bit of that glass cannon he is to his game. And I don't think that's a sign of Phil Haas anymore. I do think that he's a fighter that I held earlier losses against him and he has evolved into a much more competent MMA fighter than I ever thought he would. So I really do have to give Phil Haas his flowers when it comes to that. On the flip side, people like to get honest. I don't know if they do you, but I know they like me. People People like to get honest when we pick a fighter who we've interviewed on the channel or who JHK has interviewed on the channel. But Kyle Dawkins really is one of those fun prospects who has a really unique style for this middleweight division because he had one of those fights. And again, he had a gr another fight that you just love to see. It's a fight where did he lose against Brendan Allen? Yeah, but did he lose any stock? None whatsoever. He got called up on short notice against a very, very tough out Brendan Allen. And yeah, he lost a fight by decision. A lot of guys lose fights by decision earlier on in their career. But the fact that he got beat so badly in those first two rounds and then in that third round Kyle Dawkins was like yeah I'm pretty much out of it but as long as I can just keep on going keep on trying to get a takedown I'm gonna have success and the fact that we not only saw Kyle Dawkins get out of sticky situations from Brennan Allen on the mat who is a tough guy as we all know when it comes to the grappling he had his way with Brennan Allen in that third round like once Allen got tired Kyle Dawkins is grappling circles around him that's the neat thing about Dawkins we talk a lot about there's submission uh, grapplers and there's position grapplers. Kyle Dawkins is kind of that best of both worlds. He can get you in a very dominant position, soften you up with some of that ground and pound. And then once you, I'm going to use the term want to be submitted because I do feel like a lot of the times in MMA, a lot of people get submitted because they just don't want to be taking the ground and pound shots anymore. But Kyle Dawkins will search out that submission. He can take your back. He can get head and arm chokes. He's just such a dynamic fighter on the mat that really, anytime you're breaking down a Kyle Dawkins fight, you always have to look at how good is his opponent's takedown defense. Defense. And I really do think this fight completely comes down to the takedown defense of Phil Haas because Phil Haas, such a good striker on the feet, he's got that great power to the point where I don't think Kyle Dawkins is going to want to try at all to strike with Phil Haas in this fight. If he will, it will only be maybe to get into the clinch, and that would be about well, it. So this is the thing with Kyle Dawkins and his last opponent being Ali Askap Hizriev. Um, that guy's the weirdest fighter ever. He's Compact. all or nothing. Yeah, he's a small guy for the division. He picks people up and throws them. He throws absolute hammers with his hands. He throws head kicks, knocks people out. He's like Sayer Bahadurizada. He beat the man himself, Paul Harris, who's smart Paul Harris. Like, he was a guy, I'm pretty sure I picked him to win in that fight against Dawkins. Like, it's crazy. And then you go and you watch that interview. And I watch a lot of interviews, not just the ones on our channel, but we have a great one with Diego Fajaya this week, so check that one out. But... Dawkins was expecting to strike with Hizriev, and you look at it with Haas, I don't think you're going to strike with Phil Haas. Like, Nasruddin Imovov can, because Nasruddin is great moving side to side. He pumps out that jab, he switches stances, he throws kicks. If you want to see a great Nasruddin Imovov fight, 
Go watch him fight Munye over with Aries. It's a fun. It's a, it's, it's a fun. It's a pleasure. It's a treat to watch. Robin Black does commentary. Fellow Canadian shouts to Robin. But overall, Nasty Nemovov, I still think maybe he won that fight. I know you go in MMA decisions. The majority had Haas to win. A couple people scored it a draw. And then like three or four had it for Nemovov. I had it for Nemovov rounds two and three. But they were very close. And I could understand somebody having Haas to win. But again... Haas has early power. He can carry it. He can wrestle as it goes later on. But as the power bar decreases, if Kyle Dawkins doesn't get finished early, then he can still work away. And that's the thing that worries me a little bit. So when I looked at the odds for this fight, Matt, and I pulled them up on best fight odds, you have Haas open a plus 170. Seemed kind of silly. Well, it dropped really quick. He's a plus 117 or thereabouts. For Dawkins, open a minus 200. He's a minus 143 right now. Really eager to see these topology votes. The fans have it really close. 886 total votes. 54% Haas. 56% of those fans have to win by knockout. The 46% that have Doc is 57% by decision. And 28% by submission. That's interesting stuff. It is. Here's my problem with Kyle Dawkins. There's one part of his game that I don't really like. He does get hit clean a lot. Like, there's some guys who get hit, but it seems like when they get hit, they're kind of rolling with the shots or some bit kind of glances. Kyle Dawkins can get hit clean. And against Phil Haas, not really the guy you want to be getting hit clean against, but I do think that Kyle Dawkins' is overall durability and his ability to scramble even if he does get hurt because that's the problem that Phil Haas is going to have in this fight. If he drops Kyle Dawkins, he can't jump in to try to finish him immediately because even if he is in top position against Dawkins, Dawkins is the type of grappler who he can sweep you off the top and he can really get some good ground and pound and his submission game is just not something you want to risk playing around with on the mat. So I'm going to ever so slightly pick Kyle Dawkins, but I will fully admit Phil Haas is going to have a good chance to knock Kyle Dawkins out in this fight. I just think the durability of Dawkins and his overall cardio is going to be enough to carry him to the wind and we've talked about it and especially here recently with these fights you get a lot of fighters coming out of sanford mma you got bellator's big guy right now jason jackson representing the gym michael but chandler michael chandler kami barzini over there in a combination with henry hooped and everybody that they really have vicente. burns vicente the list goes on but when you look at this i mean ludwig klein's one of those fighters sure. on the card that's representing the gym phil haas has that great quality of training partner i'm not taking anything away from docus because well, of course, he has Chris, heavyweight wonder, and everybody else at Martinez, BJJ. And we've talked on and on about that group. Dawkins has that weird, tricky game. I do like Phil Haas in this fight. I like the punching power. I like the early power. Now, can Dawkins, again, from his last game plan, transition into this fight? Sure he can. It hasn't been that long. He's kind of conditioned for fights like this. So I could certainly see it going Dawkins' way as well. This is a pop and popcorn fight if I've ever seen one. And maybe I flip flop back and forth all week because i do see this one as being very close and i am very much on the fence but i will ever so slightly side with sanford's phil haas i think the pressure is really going to cause issues however again to play devil's advocate we saw dustin stroitzfuss try and do that it didn't work out for him against Dawkins, albeit he was a much smaller fighter. I saw Dawkins get 10 8 by Brennan Allen and come back to 10 8 Brennan Allen. That means a lot to me, and maybe I'm one of the few people who still think Brennan Allen's a really, really good 185-er, but the fact that he was able to take so much damage, get controlled, and basically have no hope in the fight of winning, and then come back and look as good as he did in the third round, that does mean a lot to me, even in defeat. And then to look as good as he did in his last fight, I do like Dawkins in this one, but it should be a phenomenal fight at 185. Matt going Dawkins. I'm going with Phil Haas. Love the fight really want to see what you're thinking out there who do you have to win phil haas is it megatron or do we have chris's brother kyle's kyle doc is gonna get the win matt's got doc i've got haas love the card cerrone taking on morono in the co-main event in the main event you better stick around for it rodriguez taking on michelle watterson's keep it locked in with fight night picks as we always say let's, let's get, get into it, it.